Hello everybody and welcome to Qubit's demonstration of workforce planning using planning analytics. In this demonstration, we'll walk through the process of planning a new hire in our model. The model will be utilizing a fictional company with dummy data. The first screen we're going to be looking at is our employee details screen. Workforce planning can be done at the level that you'd like, whether it's by job code or employee, we've built out models either way. This model is at the individual employee level. It calculates more than just salaries, calculates benefits, medical expenses, FICA, merit increases, etc. On this screen, you can see we have some employee info at the top and at the bottom, a couple of graphs showing our FTE review and our compensation review. You'll notice that we have some white drop down boxes up here at the top. The first one we're looking at is our organization hierarchy. We can flip to a different organization to see the employees hired within that organization. Same applies for the year and budget version at the top as well. You'll also notice that on the right hand side, we have an employee load from our HR system. This button can be run ad hoc if you'd like to refresh your employees on this screen. Typically our customers use a process to load their employees overnight on an automated scheduler. This can be done daily, weekly, monthly, whatever you're choosing. Let's jump right in and let's plan for a new hire and see how that flows through to our income statement. I'm going to enter in a new employee with the name Colin. I'll type in their name and I'll select their job type. Colin is gonna be in the sales department. When I select the sales department, our job code list will filter down to only show job codes within the sales department. Colin is going to be an account manager. When that selection is made, you'll notice that the green columns have been automatically populated based off of our selection. We have assumptions set up for our salaries, merit increases, and those will automatically be populated for us. This makes it much easier throughout the process because we know we have consistent salaries and the standards that we have for that job code. I'll enter Colin as an FTE of one, but I might say that Colin actually is going to get a higher salary than our assumption. Colin is actually going to get 120,000. I can overwrite the assumption salary just by typing in this one intersection for current salary. The start period for Colin is going to be June of this year. You'll notice when we select June, our FTE graph has increased in the month of June to six employees. We'll leave merit period blank for now, and we can see our new salary with the merit increase is going to be 126,000. The total cost of having Colin hired as an employee is actually 94,000 because he started in June. Now that we've populated the employee details tab, let's move over to employee summary and see the breakdown at a monthly level for this new employee. When I come over to this employee summary page, you'll notice that it has a similar looking feel, but we're now looking at a different table of data. We have our accounts on our rows and our months across the columns. Because our employee was hired in June, that is when all of our accounts start having data in them. You'll notice up here at the top that we're currently looking at Colin, but we could flip to another employee to see their monthly breakout. This gives us the detailed analysis that we need to see the cost of hiring a new employee at the monthly level. We can go up one more level and look at the department at the monthly level as well. If I come over to my department summary tab, I'll see all of my employees within the Massachusetts department, and I can see how their monthly numbers break out. We can notice for FTE, when that new employee was hired, it increased, which also increased our salary and other payroll accounts that we're looking at. If we'd like, we can go over to the employee assumptions 
And on the assumptions tab, we can see all of our merit and bonus assumptions, benefit assumptions, and our compensation, our average salary that we have by department. By flipping through this list, we'll automatically update our compensation assumptions and show us the average salaries for that position. If we'd like, we could edit these for going forward if the averages have increased, or we can have a calculation in here that actually populates the averages for us. Depends upon what your needs are, but planning analytics is very flexible that we can do it either way. And lastly, when we come over to our income statement tab, we'll see our payroll account. If I select this, we can see all of the accounts underneath payroll, which we have shown in this table here below. As you can see, planning for a new employee within planning analytics can be a very easy process. Makes analysis of that new planned employee much easier and gives us the data that we need in real time. Thank you for watching the Workforce Planning Demonstration in Planning Analytics.